Hey everybody, it's Party Leet, and today we're taking a closer look at the recently announced Total War Pharaoh. I've had the chance to play a few battles in the game and have a conversation with the developers about how they and the campaign map plays too, to an extent, and it's all helped shed some light on the game beyond what we've seen so far. The footage you see in the background is all from my own time with the game, so you're seeing what it actually looks and plays like, though it's worth keeping in mind that this is obviously still an early build of the game, with the release date slated for October of this year. With that said, October is not that far away either, so this video is going to talk about some potential issues that the devs should look to address before then, while also highlighting what I think is looking pretty good. Without further ado, let's begin. First, for some context, I got to play three separate battles that all showed off a variety of mechanics that we're familiar with as fans of the series, alongside the key new one on the battlefield, Dynamic Weather. Naturally, we've seen weather in past Total War games, but with Pharaoh, we're going to see weather change mid-battle, going from one state to another. It only changes once per battle, but even still, this is interesting in a few different ways, and it actually had an impact in battle, unlike some of the other systems we'll be discussing in just a moment. We saw, in one battle, clear skies turn to a sandstorm. In another, we saw thunderstorms roll through, and in the last, a heat wave. As per my chat with the developers, on the campaign map, different regions will be prone to different weather conditions affected by the different seasons too. When going into a battle on the campaign map, you'll be given a heads up on starting conditions, as in previous historical titles, but now you'll also get a heads up on what the weather might change into partway through the battle. This can have a variety of impacts, both familiar and new. Rain can reduce accuracy on ranged units and make it harder for things to catch fire. But new to Pharaoh, it can also turn dirt into mud changing how the battlefield plays as weather shifts occur. On the flip side, a heat wave will dry mud into dirt, and will make it easier for things to catch fire, while also making fatigue management that much more important. Thunderstorms will have all the impacts of rain, while also causing morale damage, which is a pretty cool way for weather to impact battle. Seeing my enemies barely hanging in there, and then suddenly giving up on the fight at the first crack of thunder, was extremely satisfying. Finally, sandstorms had a pretty hefty impact on range units. They had significantly reduced range and overall reduced efficiency. Sandstorms also caused trickle damage to every unit, and if you've ever been caught in a proper sandstorm, you'll understand why. These were all varied enough, and it's nice to see weather change mid-battle. You actually need to consider your army composition and think about your approach accordingly. Will your archers be as effective when the sandstorm eventually rolls in? Can you do just enough morale damage and let the thunderstorm finish the job? It's a nice new idea, and I can't wait to see it in action across the full game. With that discussed, I think we can all pretty clearly see the Total War Saga Troy DNA in this game. Even beyond what you can see in the footage here, you can expect things like multiple resources and a lack of naval battles, but I don't think any of that is a surprise to anybody. The extent to which things remain unchanged is honestly not a good look especially for a full price game. A particular issue here is the UI. It looks pretty much exactly like Troy. Sure, there's some slight restructuring here and there, and thematically it uses different textures and color schemes, but by and large, it just feels like Troy UI, in particular with regards to my least favorite part of the Troy UI, the unit cards. They feel, for lack of a better word, uninspired. Ancient Egypt is paired with such evocative imagery, and it just feels like a bit of a shame not to use it at every given opportunity. That aside, it all feels a little chunky and cumbersome. The Warhammer UI remains some of the cleanest to come out of Total War in recent years, and I do think it makes a world of difference. Visuals aside, there are a few mechanical similarities too, particularly as it pertains to unit weight classes and the focus on infantry and chariots. That latter bit goes without saying, this is the Bronze Age after all, and so it makes sense that we're going to focus on those unit classes. With the return of weight classes, we're seeing a similar attempt at differentiating these units here, as we did in Troy. And while I liked it on paper with Troy, it didn't really amount to anything on the battlefield, it didn't matter. And here with Pharaoh, I once again feel the same way as I played the three battles. Weight just didn't factor in. Sure, their stats are marginally different, but as I said in my previous video about Pharaoh, I want weight to make a noticeable difference. The impact of a charge from heavy infantry should be very different from light infantry. 
Moving through marsh or mud should be exceedingly slow as heavy infantry. Holding the line should be almost impossible as light infantry standing up against heavy. Fatigue should really factor in a lot more for heavy units, where they recover more slowly and lose it a lot more quickly too. These might all be systems in the game already, but both extremes of the spectrum need to be pushed much further, where the player is rewarded more for the use of different weight classes of units appropriately, but also punished more when they do so inappropriately. Without that very clear dichotomy, the system may as well not exist. With that said though, there is a new system in place that does use weight in a way we have not seen before. Finally, after years upon years of wanting this functionality, Total War Pharaoh has infantry pushing each other back and forth as dictated by what stances you assign them. And, as for my interview with the devs, impacted by the weight class of the unit. If you tell your units to advance, they'll push enemy infantry back. And if you tell them to give ground, they'll slowly walk backwards while still facing forwards. In some more advanced cases, these stances come with buffs to attack or defense or morale or whatever else might be relevant, and this is a really neat addition to the game. Yes, you'll still have access to things like shield wall and whatnot, but this adds mobility to some of the stances. Problem is, I didn't really ever see the need for it. There was one occasion where I was hoping to bait enemy soldiers into a trap by pulling my center back and then flanking the unit that had been baited in. But with battles lasting about 10 minutes at most, generally focused around two armies rushing at each other as hard and fast as possible, strategies like that weren't really viable or even necessary. There was one occasion where I was able to disengage a unit from melee to send them elsewhere, using the appropriate stance to make sure they didn't take too much extra damage as they backed away. But I feel like the old way of doing it wasn't really a problem either. Once again, the game needs to really reward you for using stances appropriately. On the other hand, it should punish the player for simply double-clicking away to pull back. Without that, the marginal benefits to stats didn't seem to make any difference. Now I should say, all three battles were ridiculously easy, and that's probably because they were primarily built for people that are less familiar with Total War. It's possible that on harder difficulties, it'll all work out nicely, but based on Troy, I think they need to ramp things up here. Aside from weight classes and stances, the game's got the unit traits that help some do better while flanking and others do better against flanking and so on and so forth, just like Troy. This felt a bit more impactful in Pharaoh, so I'm glad to see that, but with things like weight and stances tweaked a little, I think it could all come together really nicely. But let's move on from this. There's one more major aspect to discuss, and that's the historicity. Troy had an identity crisis right from the beginning. In my opinion, it was the game's Achilles heel. With Pharaoh, the devs repeatedly said they're committed to history, and I could see evidence of that in a few different places. For one, generals don't fight solo and come out on top against hundreds, nor do they engage in 1v1 duels as cool and flashy as they were. Instead, generals now always have their bodyguard unit just as they used to in the good old days, and what's more, you can actually customize the bodyguard unit. Total War has been leaning into RPG elements lately, and this is a good way to do so beyond skill points. Depending on the battle you're heading into, you can choose to have your general and bodyguard unit on chariots or on foot. You can arm them with different kinds of weapons and armor and shields and so on and so forth. You can make these adjustments on the fly, so there's potential for a strategic layer here, though we'll see exactly how it feels when we get our hands on the campaign map. On the battlefield itself, it's nice to see the bodyguards, and beyond that, I'm glad to see the general abilities return to something a bit more grounded and believable. No longer will you be able to heal a unit with a click of a button. Instead, we've got the more familiar rallying cries that bolster nearby units, a far more believable unit ability. Certain other elite units have access to such abilities too, but again, they're all pretty grounded. On the topic of healing though, I do want to point out a very interesting bit from the third battle we had access to, the siege battle. While the fight itself was relatively easy and stayed mostly at the walls, there were key objectives that the attacker was trying to capture, as we've seen in previous games. But one of these objectives was a temple, and any unit that stayed within the capture area of said temple while having control over it would heal at a slow rate, as long as they stayed there. While I never had to use this during the battle, I can see circumstances where it might help on harder difficulties, or when you're outnumbered, or 
when you need to just prolong a battle as long as possible. And what I like about this is that it's a great way to translate the very gamey ability to heal units mid-battle into something at least somewhat believable. Hurt units going to the temple for the healers that are residing there to patch them up as best as possible is significantly more grounded than a random ability that gets popped in the middle of the fight, and it comes with some negative impacts to the player too, such as having to pull the unit back in the first place and keep them away from the fighting to hopefully be used more effectively later. Sure, it's not hyper-realistic because people don't heal from wounds that quickly, etc, etc, but it's trying to find that sweet spot between realism and video game, and I think there's an interesting idea here for sure. Another element that I quite liked was armor degradation. Units all have armor stats, as before, but they also have a degradation level now. Being in combat makes it drop, and so as it goes from 100% to 0%, so too does the overall armor stat of the unit, making it that much more susceptible to damage. I think that's just a plain good idea, and I want to see it in all historical Total War games moving forward. It made a noticeable impact, but honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing it be a bit more aggressive. Maybe I'm just a masochist though. Let's briefly discuss the audio-visual experience here too. Again, this is obviously not a review, but I just want to touch on the good and the bad here and hope that the devs can use that to push things in the right direction. I already talked about the UI elements earlier in the video, and I definitely think we need to see banners on the battlefield. The austere icons aren't enough to make the battlefields feel alive, and CA have done such a good job of making gorgeous faction flags, but then they don't actually use them. It's a bit of a shame. but. I've beaten those dead horses plenty enough, I think, so with them kicked once more each, let's turn our attention to other matters. For one, the music is absolutely spot on. I have nothing but pure excitement to hear what else they've got on that front. That aside, the environment art is really quite nice. The bloom might be a little overtuned, and it makes me think of, like, the early 2000s, you know, Age of Empires 3's bloom problems and things like that, but behind the VFX, are some really nice models and textures. Sure, I'm slightly biased, just excited to see ancient Egypt come to life, but I mean, look at this stuff. I think it looks great. Unfortunately, the same can't be said about the character art. It's a real miss, and it almost feels like it's done by an entirely different team. Now, typically environment artists and prop artists are separate from character artists, so it quite literally is probably done by a different team, but the quality shift is very noticeable here. The faces in particular stand out, or rather they don't, they're all kind of squished. Look, realistically, I don't normally play Total War from this close-up angle, except for from time to time, typically playing from high up in the sky instead. But it'd be nice to see these guys look like they belong in a Total War game releasing in 2023, especially since matched combat is making a return, if I've understood the devs correctly, and looking at the screen, it seems very much like, yes, matched combat happens a lot more often, which means you actually want to, you know, zoom in and see the fighting, either while playing or while reviewing a replay. But if the unit models look like this, well, it's a little less appealing to do so. Now, I should note that matched combat does come with issues of its own. It's cool seeing individuals actually engaged in combat, but that coolness is marred by the quality of the individual models and also some of the slipping and sliding that happens from time to time. It's a give and take, I suppose. I don't know which I prefer, to be perfectly honest, and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below, actually. Now, I don't want to harp on that any further, but I would definitely like to see things a little sharper for the final build of the game. Speaking in broader terms, there's some room for improvement across a few different elements, of course. I imagine some of this stuff is already being addressed, like how chariots don't have enough oomph to their charges, but it's possible that some are going to stay as they are, like how attacking archers will sometimes shoot fiery arrows at the walls, having them bounce off and set the grass ablaze, eventually lighting up their own siege equipment. While it's really cool to see fire spread like that, it's less cool when it results in what can only be described as silly AI moments on the battlefield. With that said, I'd like to see archers be able to target the ground like artillery can. If fire is such a threat, especially in hotter environments, I'd love to be able to set things alight and then see the enemy get flushed out or otherwise suffer through the damage caused by the fire. It is quite significant based on what I saw during the siege battle, and this could be a really nice tactical tool when the opportunity arises, tying in nicely with the dynamic weather elements too. It's honestly really hard to judge how Pharaoh is going to turn out this early on. We've only played a few battles that were tuned for a demographic that 
doesn't play Total War regularly, so it was all way too easy, and we didn't realistically need to engage with all of the new toys or anything as much as I tried. That aside, there are going to be some interesting campaign map elements that we didn't get a chance to play with yet, and only heard the devs talk about. For example, religious and cultural differences between the Egyptians, Canaanites, and Hittites will play a role in how things play out on the campaign map. That aside, as you make progress through a campaign, you'll gain access to different kinds of crowns that you can equip for different types of effects and political powers to use across your faction. I want to see how all that feels before I can make a judgement call. It sounds cool, but how does it play? What's more, once you actually rise to a certain level of power, presumably that of Pharaoh, you'll be able to further specialize your faction by picking a legacy to determine what lies ahead, and applying appropriate modifiers and opening up certain unique opportunities depending on your choice. Will you be warmongers and conquerors or builders of great monuments instead? We already talked previously about how weather systems and multiple resources will work, with the latter being similar to Troy, and there's also a system that allows you to recruit local units as you travel to far-off lands. Nothing unfamiliar to veterans of the Total War franchise, of course. The devs also discussed how the world will darken over time, both visually and mechanically, losing stability as the Bronze Age collapse progresses, going from an era with mostly positive events to one with more negative events and natural disasters, all the way to an era of total collapse, trying to reflect some conditions that may have existed during this very real historical period. It all sounds really cool, to be frank, but the fact of the matter is, I can't comment on any of these outside of remarking that they exist, because I haven't played with these toys just yet. If you want to hear about Total War Pharaoh's campaign mechanics when I'm able to get my hands on them, don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel. I'm keeping an eye on this one. I'm a big fan of ancient Egypt, and I've wanted Total War to explore this region and time in history since forever, so I'm cautiously optimistic as always. We'll see how it plays out, of course. At the end of the day, as far as the battles are concerned, the devs just need to push each mechanic a little bit harder, be a bit more punishing and a bit more rewarding alike, and that'll really make each unit feel different, as if their unique traits and weight classes actually mattered. The weather stuff seems neat, and I hope the novelty doesn't wear off too quickly there, and I think there are some really good ideas besides. I can't wait to take them for a proper spin. I have to say, I'm definitely seeing more of a commitment to staying grounded here, at least for the time being, and that does make me quite happy. I hope you found this video informative, highlighting both the good and potential bad from my time with the battles in Total War Pharaoh. If you did, don't hesitate to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. I'll try and answer any questions you might have in the comments too, and apart from that, remember to subscribe for more strategy gaming reviews, previews, guides, and more. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis, y'all keep us alive and running smoothly, and of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.